Tony, you are absolutely great. I loved oh, it. Oh, thank you. Thanks, okay, Rhea. now we're going to ask a lot of questions. Sure. I, I read about you, and your sound has been described as uh, swinging, romantic, sensual, and yes, it's all those things, but how would you describe your sound? Well, I think finally these days, I describe my sound as, I sound like me. Whereas, you know, and of course everyone, you know, in order to, to communicate to somebody else how somebody sounds, like, well, he's a cross between, you know, I hear, he's a cross between Frank Sinatra, Michael Buble, uh -huh. Tony Bennett, Harry Connick Jr., yeah. and, uh, you know, Billy Joel. You know, I hear all those things. But, but to me, I think, you know, with any artist that, um, you know, you start having your influences at one point and then you kind of mimic them. But at some point, you just start to Be pull yourself. away and then everybody does it. And so I'd like to say, I sound like me. You do sound like so, you. All right. Well, what is it about jazz that you love? The thing about jazz that's great is that unlike, unlike when you play pop music, which I love, or, or, um, other, or classical music, which is also beautiful, jazz, you're always making up on the spot. So there's never a chance to get bored with it. And uh, even if it's a song I've done a million times, even if it's Fly Me to the Moon, um, which, which I've been playing since I was a kid, every time I take a solo, it's different. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's it. I mean, that's it's just exciting. always different. It's always new. Tony, why do you think that the classic American songbook has become so popular again? Well, it has become popular again. I'm very happy about that. Uh, but I think it's, the great American songbook is the original pop music. So in pop music is what I love. And to me, it's a great song matched with a great lyric. And there's something about that that appeals to the basic human need to hear m music and music makes people happy so I think it's kind of a rebirth because more because it's passing on to a different generation and 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 do you think what is it that younger the younger generation finds great about it well for me I know when I discovered it I, I was I discovered it kind of late because I grew up on the easy listening hits of the 70s and 80s. Uh, and uh, my parents didn't listen to Frank Sinatra, or Tony Bennett, or Gershwin. And uh, to me, I heard this stuff. And I, there's all this. It's not just one great song. And it's just, there's hundreds of them. And they just really appealed to me. And even though they were written 50, 60 years ago, I just really related to what it was saying and, and the, 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 what the lyrical content, what it was about, and also the, the melodic content. Now, you, you pick a lot of interesting songs to sing, and I think doing Prince's Kiss was gutsy. Well, thank you. <laughs> well, you know, the thing about Kiss, I, I was about to make my second CD, Last First Kiss, and I was, I was you know, I take my time looking for songs, and I was in a, on a bar on the Upper East Side of New York, and they were playing all these 80s songs, Bon Jovi, and then Prince came on, and I, I was thinking to myself as it was blasting, in, in the in the bar there that you know, this is really a really good song and it's basically a blues so when I went home I I had it in my collection I put it up and I started the mess with it and I was like this could be really fun I had no idea if if I if people would like it or not I, and it was kind of a risk because I, I was really nervous at first to start doing it and it's what it is is it proves that a great song can survive the translation of genre from anything from Prince's style to, to jazz to bossa nova. And well, you do it incredibly well, and I think it's time for us to.